our favorite hot chocolate by far. We don't drink hot chocolate any other way anymore. Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to Art of Creation Homestead. Again, hey, we're still in the kitchen. You know why? Because it's more of the Homestead Kitchen Skills Series. That's why. And it's also cold outside. <laughs> Alright, it's winter time. I know, I'm wearing a sleeveless shirt, but I'm inside. I can do that. And uh, I'm also wearing shorts and barefooted. That's what hillbillies do. But it's cold outside. And hot chocolate is like the greatest thing you can possibly do when it's cold outside. Right? So... We're in here, and we're gonna do our most diabetic friendly version of hot chocolate possible. I mean, maple hot chocolate, completely sweetened, maple syrup, no sugar added, all right? So we're gonna go over here, Angela Kay's gonna show you what we got going on. I originally learned how to do this from Michelle Visser. The original recipe came from her. I have altered it to our liking because we like things a little richer on chocolate. So I have altered it to our liking, but this is amazing. Now, who is Michelle Visser, real fast? She has a blog called SolelyRested.com, and she has also done an amazing cookbook called Sweet Maple. She does all things maple syrup. Correct? Yes. Exactly. Awesome. And you learn so much yep. about how to convert from sugar to maple syrup. Yes. Okay, in this pot... We have a fourth of a cup of cocoa powder, which we use organic. If you watched our pantry video, you will know what kind we use. And I have a pinch of salt. Yes, I said a pinch of salt. You need it in this. And to this, we are going to add a third of a cup of water. And you want to turn this over medium heat. When I saw this, that Michelle Visser said to start it out this way, and you you end up with almost like liquid chocolate in here, liquid unsweetened chocolate. It made perfect sense. Yep. So you stir this around until. It makes, starts to thicken. In just a couple of minutes, it will start to thicken really nicely. And I will show you what that looks like when it's there. As you can see, it's starting to thicken. So when you stir, you leave trails. Yep. So now, you, I know at this point, normally when you make hot chocolate or cocoa, whichever you call it, you would add sugar at this point. You don't add the maple syrup till the end. No, do not. So now we are going to start adding our milk. I'm going to start with one cup. Because you want to scrape down the sides of your pot and get all that, that chocolate off your pot. And get everything mixed in before you add more milk. I am going to add a total of four and a half cups of milk. But I'm only using my one cup and I adding it a little at a time because I don't want to dirty up more dishes. So I'm going to use the one dish. <laughs> yep. So all of that's mixed in. So now we're going to pour in the rest of our milk. Now we have all of our milk in. And our chocolate is all stirred in. And as you can see, it's nice and chocolatey. This is the way we like it. What's the sense in, in having hot chocolate if it's not nice and chocolatey? I mean, come on, people. So, from here, you are just going to heat it over medium heat until it's your desired amount of heat. Until it's as hot as you like it. If you like it really hot, let it go till it gets really hot. If you like it just barely warm, let it go till it gets there. When this first starts heating, you want to stir it often. But when once it starts getting starts to get really warm, you want to stir it constantly because otherwise it will scorch and burn on the bottom. As you can see by the steam rolling off of it, if you can see that steam, I think you can. 
it is hot enough now you want to turn the heat off now you want to remember to get it a little bit hotter than you would normally drink it at that temperature because you're getting ready to add cold maple syrup and it's going to bring down the temperature significantly yes you are adding the maple syrup now because maple syrup has a very low burning point so it will burn at a lower temperature so than sugar so now you want to add in two-thirds of a cup of pure maple syrup not a maple flavored syrup or anything not pancake maple. syrup no. not maple flavored syrup right. for the love of all things good and holy please <laughs> use pure maple syrup yep and don't use more than that you're gonna overpower the maple flavor than chocolate yes it's gonna be too much now you want to stir in that maple syrup it doesn't take no time for it to melt because this is so hot now you want to add in about a teaspoon and a half you guys know i don't measure vanilla you want to add in about a teaspoon and a half of pure vanilla extract and stir that in and now you are ready for an amazing treat and what you get get your favorite rooster mug see <laughs> and then you put some hot chocolate in it <laughs> And when it cools down a little, so Jason doesn't burn his pie hole, he will taste it for you. Now, make sure I don't hurt myself. Because this will, now look, it'll burn you if you ain't careful. It'll you know, burn your mouth and everything. It's just uncomfortable at that point. So you gotta be careful. But, the rooster mug makes it better. We got these at the barrel. Sorry. <laughs> Tim Hawkins reference for those of you. Uh, for look, those of you who don't know. This YouTube Tim Hawkins Cracker Barrel. Please, for your own enjoyment. <laughs> Alright, y'all go away. I'm gonna, eat, I'm gonna drink me some hot chocolate and watch a movie. <laughs> that's delicious. So, hey, that's, it's our favorite way to, our favorite hot chocolate by far. We don't drink hot chocolate any other way anymore. And it's honestly so much better. It'll, okay, so you gotta put forth a little effort on stuff. Big deal. It's so much better than any, any box mix you're gonna get. So, hey, thank you guys for watching. Again, my name is Jason. That's Angela K. This is our Christian Homestead. Love you guys. God bless you and goodbye.